I'm a lifelong Lincoln City fan. I've had season tickets when we were really bad. I commentate on home games for visually impaired fans. And my great, great, great uncle was even chairman back in the 1940s and 50s. I've not done a long-term save with Lincoln City on Football Manager since FM18. It's been far too long and now is the perfect time. The board are expecting us to come mid-table. The pre-season preview placing us in the 13th to 16th bracket as predictions fluctuated throughout pre-season as clubs made signings. This actually feels pretty spot on. Using the One Football app, you can see that Lincoln City right now are 15th in League One with some pretty inconsistent form and some pretty poor key match stats, particularly in possession. In reality, Lincoln are struggling for an in-form striker. Ben House has got four goals to his name so far this season. Tom Hopper, just two goals to his name and that is reflected in Football Manager and it was the first area that I needed to improve on. If you do want to get the One Football app as well and follow your favourite teams, feel free to download it for free from the top line of the description. To try and rectify this striker issue, we brought in a ton of players on trial, including Hal robson Carnu and a 37-year-old Obafemi Martins. We settled on a 4-4-1-1 formation with double segundo volantes. Of course, everyone knows this translates to the second steering wheel, which of course means we're going to have two people steering us to victory this season. Through pre-season, Obafemi and robson Carnu both managed to bag goals and I wanted to see how much they'd want in wages. Robson Carnu suddenly priced us out of a move, but Obafemi was very reasonable, so we put a contract in expecting him to sign. However, it turns out the Nigerian prefers the Sydney Opera House to Lincoln Cathedral, as he signed for Sydney FC. The Snake. This sent us back to square one looking for a striker, but luckily for us, another trialist, Jerome Sinclair, was happy to drop his wage demands from £15,000 a week as it looked like no other club was in for him. So with a striker signed up, we also went in for right winger Grant Ward, as I wasn't too happy with my right sided options. I was happy to leave the signings there, but a late bid for the squad's best player and club captain Reagan Paul to the tune of £1 million was too good to turn down. To replace the right back, we brought in Matthew Pennington from Shrewsbury for £100,000 before making a deadline day deal to pick up Danny Drinkwater on a free contract to add some experience into our midfield. It turned out he was awful. But with Reagan Paul gone, we needed a new captain. Step up Sean Rowan. 19 years old, produced by the club's academy, Premier League potential and a nailed on starter. It was the only option that made sense. So armed with our new signings, we got the season underway at home to newly promoted Exeter City. Tom Hopper will be taken as our chief striker. I'm not quite sure what the penalty was for. I won't complain. But if Tom Hopper can bury this one, oh my word, it'll be... Oh, he's done it. I thought the keeper had saved it. He went the right way. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think again, this is why they do the beta parts of the game, right? They can see all these bugs like on a mass scale, right? And fix them in order of priority and things like that. It's a, it's a good thing to, to have all these beta testing periods as Tom Hopper out of nowhere. Sorensen brings the ball forward into Ward. We've not seen too much of today, but he has just got an assist and Tom Hopper has got a hat-trick. As well as Hopper's hat-trick, goals from Ted Bishop and Jacob Davenport saw us win the game 5-1 to go top of the table on day one. We follow that up with 1-0 wins away to Portsmouth and at home to Forest Green Rovers to see us take nine points from the first three games. Goals from Jerome Sinclair saw us pick up 1-1 draws to Oxford and Fleetwood, whilst three first-half goals against Peterborough was enough to beat the local rivals, make Lelujo cry, and put the Imps top of the table six games into the season. Let's just ignore the cup games. But the good times didn't stop there. September started with a 1-1 draw away to Cambridge, but we had two huge home wins as we scored six goals in two games, beating Accrington 4-0 and Derby County 2-0, as well as keeping another clean sheet in a 0-0 game away to Bristol Rovers. Ten games played in the league and we were still unbeaten. We did drop to second place in the table as Portsmouth overtook us thanks to their somehow better start to the season despite us beating them. But all good things have to come to an end and, well, things came to an end in style. Jules, ball forward into Burns. Burns, how's that got? How has that gone in from that sort of angle? 2-0 down then. About to be 3-0 down. Uh, Pingu, thanks for the follow. Uh, Schnookums, thanks for the follow as well, chaps. Much appreciated. Welcome in. Uh, I would wear the sunglasses upside down. Oh, my word. Hat-trick for Lou Barry. They don't quite fit so well. They're not quite as comfy upside down, I'm afraid. I feel like the magic of this suit is...
Worn off. The magic's worn off. I'm happy to just go with it at this stage. Rest the best players. No, we're going to get back into the game. Our first league loss of the season. So if we get sacked in the morning, I feel like that would be really, really harsh on us. And we don't deserve it. The strange thing is, I have no idea how we're losing 7-0. After a quite frankly inexplicable 7-0 loss to MK Dons, it kicked off a downward spiral. Despite picking up four points from six available against Bolton and Charlton, we suffered defeats to Ipswich and Barnsley twice, once in the league and the other to knock us out of the Papa John's trophy, barely scoring a goal along the way. A slight change in formation was needed and we switched up to a 4-4-2. This had the desired effect as we beat Port Vale 2-0, before we got humbled and embarrassed by non-league side Halifax Town as they beat us 4-0 in the FA Cup first round. This then kicked off a run of form where we had no idea what Lincoln team was going to show up. We either dominated the game or got dominated. By this point we dropped out of the top two and were bouncing around the playoff places as the points total between the top 10 teams in the league was super close. But as January came around we had too many players at the club and we were right on the limit of our wage budget meaning that we couldn't afford to offer contracts to players with expiring contracts for next season. Namely, Tom Hopper, who'd racked up 13 goals to his name so far this season. As a result, we had to offload some dead wood. We cancelled the expensive loans of Tasha Oakley Booth and Jordan Garrick, who barely featured for us, as well as selling some players who didn't get much game time in Charles Vernon, Max Sanders and Lars Sorensen, for a combined fee just shy of £200,000. The main concern this transfer window, though, was for club captain and top prospect Sean Rowan. He's got a half a million pound release fee clause in his contract, which we can't get rid of on the grounds that he won't talk to us with a new contract because clubs were interested in signing him towards the end of the summer transfer window. Throughout the window, clubs made bids of up to £250,000, but that all changed on deadline day when several clubs triggered his release fee clause. Luckily, Brighton, who eventually signed him, offered him back to us on loan for the rest of the season. But whilst we waited for the Rowan deal to get sorted on deadline day, we also saw some players available to come into the team. We picked up Josh Eccles on loan from Coventry. His contract expires in summer and he's a player that we've been scouting out, thinking about signing on a free transfer for next season. The loan allows us to take a closer look at him. We also made a second signing in Sean McLaughlin. A left-sided centre-back way better than our current option, Joe Walsh, was available for a cut price deal of £70,000, so we swooped in, leaving the squad in a much better financial position and arguably a stronger position on the pitch as well. Access granted. Reducing the wage bill allowed us to offer Tom Hopper an extra year on his contract to reward him for his fine goal-scoring form this season, which was sure to continue. Spoiler! After Tom Hopper scored 13 goals in the first 24 league games of the season, he went on to score one goal in the next 20 league games. This was our downfall. Now with some slight tweaks and adjustments tactically to our 4-4-2, we were actually really difficult to beat. With the exception of a 5-2 win over Ipswich though, we did really struggle to score. Lincoln's Achilles heel in the game and real life is the lack of a top striker. Portsmouth have Dane Scarlett. Plymouth have Niall Ennis, Fleetwood have Callum Morton and MK Dons have Louis Barry. We have Tom Hopper, Ben House and Jerome Sinclair, none of whom are going to score you 20 goals in a season at this level. Despite creating numerous chances and winning the XG battles in most games, we just didn't have that killer instinct as Tom Hopper lost form and House and Sinclair never really found form in the first place. The absolute epitome of this was one of the darkest days of the season. We lost 1-0 to relegation threatened Burton Albion, who scored with their only shot on target, whilst their keeper had an immense game, keeping a clean sheet despite our 3.24 XG. The Twitch chat were calling for a change in formation, however I was reluctant to switch things up. Clearly the whole team were playing well, we didn't concede too many goals, we created lots of chances, we just couldn't score them. Strikers were the issue. Also, I wasn't really keen on changing formation and resetting that tactical familiarity because we were still on course for the playoffs. We were able to snatch some decent results. A 1-0 win at Cambridge and a 2-1 win saw us do a double over Derby County. But for every win we had, there were two draws and a very rare loss. When I say we were very difficult to beat, 
we really were difficult to beat. We only lost four games in the second half of the season. One to the aforementioned Burton Albion and three games to the league's top three sides, Portsmouth, Peterborough and Sheffield Wednesday. But the sheer number of draws was having an impact on our standing in the table. So much so, we dropped out of the top six. Something had to change and we had to score more goals. So we took a risk and went for a much more attacking 4-2-4. Our first game lining up this way saw us beat Fleetwood 2-1, although we left it very late to score the winner, courtesy of Grant Ward. Pushing forward really helped us score more goals though. We scored three goals in a game for the first time in three months as we put three past Cheltenham. Even Tom Hopper scored his first goal in four months. The issue was though, they put three goals past us. We also scored two goals past playoff rivals Plymouth and Barnsley in mid-April, but they also put two past us. We'd upset the balance of the team, and despite scoring more than ever, we were now conceding more than ever. With two games to go, we were three points outside the playoffs, and we needed a miracle. And that miracle arrived in Tom Hopper. Hopper, who had scored one goal in the previous 20 matches, went on to score four goals in one game. I'll be honest, I'd have much rather we won that game 1-0, and Tom have scored his other three goals spread across the 10 games that we've drawn since the start of January but there's nothing we could do about it now. It all came down to the final game of the season. The challenge seemed impossible. We had to win our game, and we needed both Oxford, who were taking on already relegated Accrington Stanley, and Barnsley, taking on free-scoring Peterborough, already promoted, to lose with a 12-goal swing going in our favour. We've been really unlucky all season, and was this finally gonna be the time where luck actually turned in our favour? Well, Something happened that, if it didn't happen live on stream, there is no way I would have believed it, that you guys would have believed it, but it was an absolute monumental miracle. Barnsley somehow beat the most informed team in the league 3-1. Playoff hopes were over. In the end, we finished three points off the playoffs, as us, Oxford and Barnsley all picked up wins. Our biggest issue, of course, was the lack of goals scored, and this is reflected in the expected goals and expected points table, where based on the expected goals and goals against, we should have come third, but it wasn't to be. So we've got another season of League One football ahead of us, but there are plenty of reasons to be optimistic. We have championship level centre-backs in the Flying Dutchman, Lewis Monsma and Sean McLaughlin. Ted Bishop, Jimmy Robson and Grant Ward all notched up double-figure assists and despite an incredibly long goal drought, Hopper did end up finishing with 18 goals this season. We'll also have young strikers Charlie Kendall and Freddie Draper returning from loans in League 2, scoring 18 and 11 goals respectively. We also got Nottingham Forest as an affiliate club and will certainly be raiding their youth team for some cheap loans to bolster our squad next season. And we have some money in the budget to strengthen the wings and goalkeeping options as Carl Rushworth finishes his loan and goes back to Brighton. I would love to make Sam Long our first choice keeper, but after learning him out to Scottish Championship side Inverness as a first choice keeper, apparently the zero games that he played is enough playing time according to their manager when I confronted him. As a result, he's not quite developed as much as I wanted him to and maybe isn't quite up to being our first choice keeper next season. So will we be able to put the bones of season one behind us and actually achieve promotion in season two or will the same issues plague us again? To find out, you can watch the Twitch live streams linked down in the description to my Twitch channel or you can stick around to watch these season reviews every single season.